Welcome to the Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival 2024. Tom Corliss here. Uh, we are covering, as we do every time, all of the new items or those on the garden grays. If you want items from previous years, there are videos here on the channel from previous years and as well. If you'd rather read those reviews, they're at www.nt.com. And what we do every year is we do a, two posts on the website. There'll be two this year. One that has all these new items, which will be in this video. The other one has all our reviews ever. So it will have everything that's returning as well as those new items. Both those reviews should be out in a day or two, probably by the time you're watching. So keep that in mind. Again, www.nt.com. Uh, we're starting at Brunch Cot, uh, which is here over by Test Track, uh, is going to have one new item and a returning item we needed for the Garden Grays. Uh, for those that don't know, the Garden Grays is one of these. you got to get all your stamps. So make sure when you buy these items listed, you get your stamps. So I got the avocado toast and I got the avocado stamp. Isn't that cute? It corresponds. Isn't that great? Um, real quick, I have to give you a disclaimer. We were invited to the media event today by Disney. They did provide a $100 gift card. I will tell you, $100 does not cover everything. So in the interest of fairness, Disney has paid for some of the food today, but probably not a vast majority of it because there are, I believe, 60 something new items. So thank you to Disney for hosting us. We, have, we got a lot more to go and a special thank you to our WIGS members at patreon.com slash WWNT who essentially pay for the rest. They, they, Fund all this great content that helps everyone out in the parks. If you want to become a part of that, that link will take you there. We appreciate the uh, help. So, the new item, uh, we'll talk about the avocado toast eventually, but the new item is going to be the biscuit and gravy, uh, which is, believe it or not, uh, not a vegan item. <laughs> Despite that it's made with impossible chicken fried steak and impossible sausage gravy, it's, I don't think it's even vegetarian. Oh, no, that, that just means Garden Grays. They don't have a thing for vegetarian. I assume this is vegetarian, since it's impossible. Yeah, I mean, both items are impossible, so it has to be. Um, well, let's do it. Jake, if you want to get in there. I also have another clip they could use, but, yeah, let's let's try this out. Hey, it's Eric Morton. Eric, do you want to eat some meat? It's not great. It's impossible. Yeah, it's impossibly yeah. bad. <laughs> that all makes sense. It's okay. It's... And if the I know it's impossible. It's super dry. If the alternative is a life without biscuits and gravy, sure. But so I will tell you, there are a lot of impossible meats I like. This one's it's it's real dry and real chewy. Like it doesn't it doesn't emulate sausage well. It doesn't taste good. Even if sometimes it doesn't emulate the texture, I still like impossible stuff. Like the flavor will be good. The biscuit the biscuit is not dry. The biscuit's nice, but. The, the sausage and the the sausage kills it. I think. I would have guessed that wasn't meat. Yeah. I just didn't want to tell you before you ate it. Yeah. Don't do that to me again. Is that a threat? I just woke up. No, I didn't wake up. But I just got here. Another one of Eric's favorites: avocado toast. Oh so boy. this is a returning item, but it was Garden Grays. So I'm gonna ruin Jake's shot. There you go. <laughs> There's the avocado toast, which they describe as. Uh, with marinated tomatoes and plant-based cheese crumbles on a toasted ciabatta, this is going to be plant-based or vegan. Just, you know what? For those that haven't seen our reviews, I'm kind of a meat and potatoes picky guy. Kind of. Tom will eat anything that you put in front of him. You couldn't tell. This debuted a couple of years ago, so I kind of forgot. Very floral. If I like it or not. It's, it's very good. The ciabatta, I'm stunned, is fresh and soft, and like it's got the nice crisp edge, but it's nice and soft in the middle. I got like a flower in my bite, so maybe that's why it was so oh, no. floral, overpowered. So over. Eric won't be in the rest of the review because he ate a flower. No, I'm just saying kind of overpowered everything else. Oh, really? I mean, yeah, the here, tomatoes try, try, are nice. Try this leaf here. There you go. I mean, if I eat just a flower. It's yeah. not just me, right? I wouldn't eat a flower. I mean, I don't, that's not my the part of the avocado toast. I like, I like the tomatoes. I like the avocado. I like the plant-based cheese. Otherwise, it's very good. So we are going to be doing like a ranking the top seven and bottom seven, right? Oh, we have to give things, I forgot. The new thing we do is we rank things out of seven. But also we do a top and bottom seven. Do we seven. handicap them if they're like a plant-based dish or do we just pretend like it's a regular biscuit uh, biscuit and gravy and we're measuring Why would that side? matter? No, you're, you're ranking the, this item of its own merit. Okay. Right, because there is plant-based stuff like, like that that's I'm with you on the two. I agree, two out of seven. The avocado toast, I'm gonna go six. Honestly, I 
I was going to say six five. out of seven. Four or five. But not Eric's cup it's of not, tea. But it's not something that I'm going to run into the park to order. Six out of seven. I really like it. But again, it's a returning item. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to do Farmer's Feast. All right, the Farmer's Feast is where we are now. Uh, this is World Discovery near Test Track. It's just going to be on the other side of the planter here. Um, so we're going to start with the grilled street corn on the cob. Eric, I can't eat this. You're going to be alone on this one. Uh, I, my braces were supposed to be off. I have another month left. But it's going to be uh, street corn on the cob with savory garlic spread and plant-based cheese. So this is, again, vegan or plant-based. But you like corn, at least, right? Everyone loves corn. It's a, like a big lump with knobs. It has, it has the, the juice. juice. We're so hip, we're on top of all the trends from a year ago. I don't know about the vegan cheese. The rest of it's good. It would have been better if it was hot. What do you not, like about it? It's not hot. It hasn't been sitting there long either, I will tell you. It just has a good blend of flavors. You can smell it from far away. It smells, like, doesn't it smell like something you want to eat? It does, I wish I could, I can. I give this five Spike the Beast porks out of seven. Next up, we have the veal loin. Woo! I love that we undo all the goodwill with the vegan option with baby cow. Uh, veal loin with spring pea risotto featuring Ben's original international grains, uh, Ar arborio rice, and red wine syrup. I don't know if you can see it on camera. This, to the eye, this looks pretty dry. Would you agree, Tom? The, the veal looks incredibly it, dry. It looks really dry. I'm I'll try the veal first on its own. It's not as dry as it looks. It actually has some flavor in there, some juice. Yeah, you're right. The exterior looks like the desert scene on Living with the Lamb. But the, the combination's great. The wine sauce is really pungent. Yeah. Perfectly pairs with the rice and then the juicy veal in there. This is solid. Yeah. Like. It's not going to be, I sat down in a restaurant and ate veal quality. It's not what you're going to get here. The pea risotto is a little bit of a question mark. You're like, huh, how's that going to work? But it tastes all right. You've never had pea risotto? I have. It just, this one looks particularly, I don't know, interesting. Full of rich green peanuts. I think it tastes good, though. Oh. Five? How about a five? Five out of seven. Five. All right. All right. Five. It's Spike time for our, ah, our first ah, drink. Ah. Oh Although boy! Jake and I drank at the media. Do we play the game? Does it? Did this come with the drink or land in the drink while we were it photographing? Came with okay. The uh, this is the frozen lemon tea cocktail. This was frozen at one time. With Baron Jager, honey and bourbon. Is that right? Never Baron, heard of it. Baron Jager. I don't know. It's very good. Strong honey flavor. Holy cow! Yeah, that is like a, a pungent, a really pungent honey tea with... with like the folks at Halls got involved in the uh, cocktail game. Woo! I don't hate it. No! I mean, that's a str it's actually a strong cocktail. For a festival cocktail, even though this has mostly melted, you expect it to be more watered down, and it's not no, pretty it's strong. No, it's... Alcohol is hitting you in the face, but so is the honey. So it's, it's pretty decently masked. Yeah, that's not bad. Um, it's, a, it's a good frozen cocktail. I'm going to give it, I hate to give it a five. Six? I'll give it a six. Yeah, I'm with Everything you. Everything else was a five, it's a six. Six out of seven, there we go. Moving on. Eric, when I find myself at Flower and Garden looking for some food to eat, I come to the Honey Bistro. Why wouldn't Almost you? Almost Spike the Bee. Is this where he lives? Yeah, this is his home, yeah. I've never been like there. Like Figment has the glass pyramid. I've never been inside. I've never been invited to I like... mean, it's small, I don't think we'd fit. Yeah. Anyway, the Honey Bistro. Maybe we should start with that. That's milk. Yeah, because this thing Let's is on its that. way out. Uh, that's, is that the Honey Peach Cobbler Freeze? Yes, Honey Peach Cobbler Freeze. Is it the alcohol? With vodka. Let's do it. Whoa. It's like someone poured vodka into a Pop-Tart. On the spectrum of festival alcoholic cocktails. Might be the strongest. Might be the best. Because it's the strongest. I just feel like No, it's no, I got it. Back off the straw a little bit. Get in the middle of that bad boy. Back off the straw. Yeah, like lift the straw up so it's not at the bottom or the top. Right in the middle. Get that peach 
cobbler taste. It's still really strong though, which is great. I give this drink seven. Seven. Spike the B Sports. Oh, it's so fantastic, right? The... I mean, it's a mess. Yeah, I mean, the, the sweetness of the honey, they get the, the peach flavor. Um, so it's, oh, it's, it's like a cream. milky vodka drink yeah. is what I would say, and it's fantastic. I love it. That's love probably going to be in our best of the event. So we'll I hope note, so. We'll note that one. Spike um, the bee needs to be I know. somewhere in there. Oh, boy. I know Eric's going to love this. It's cauliflower. Mmm. Isn't the trend to prevent, pretend that cauliflower is something other than cauliflower? It like, oh, it's rice. Just, I would eat cauliflower every day. I love it. Cauliflower cooked so perfectly. Not too hard, it's not too soft, it's not soggy. The the puree underneath. The carrot. Get some of that carrot. The carrot puree comes in strong on the back end. It's perfect accompaniment. The rice is well cooked. Everything just pairs together so perfectly. Um, Here's the problem. This booth also has the chicken and waffles, and we're not reviewing it, not reviewing it because it's not new, and it looks Fantastic! I've never actually seen You've it. You've never I've had it? I don't think I've had it. And it's mm. a giant piece of chicken and this freshly made waffle. I don't remember. And I don't know how you walk past that for this. Because I'm 280 pounds and I eat theme park food all the time and I want to come here and eat something that I won't feel bad about but is also delicious. That's why I'm eating this. It's pretty good. I, I love have it. to say, it's not bad. Uh, how many? Spike it's vegetarian. It's it? not. It's not vegan though. This is a seven for me. That's seven? For I was gonna me? say like a five. Okay. I really love this and I applaud five. something that's flavorful and well thought out uh, and healthy. I think that's a rarity. I think a couple of dishes like this where I can offset all the meat I've had all day, I like this a lot. All right. I think if you're vegetarian, you're gonna go crazy for that. Now we're moving over to the refreshment port, uh, which is right over there and has a few items. When I was a kid, they had McDonald's. Do you remember that, Eric? Oh, yeah. McDonald's French fries. I'll find it in here somewhere. Here it is. Uh, so we are going to have a vegan dish. We're going to have the plant-based buffalo chicken tender poutine. I was going to say it looked plant-based when you put it on the table. It's that cheese. That is a giant portion, and it, it might be the hottest food I've ever gotten at a festival. My hand was actually burning carrying it over. Um, but it's on crispy potato barrels with ranch and plant-based blue cheese crumbles. I'm so excited for those. They're actually still crunchy. <laughs> We've had them from there a million times. They're usually not great. I think they're perfect today. But people, people like potato barrels all different ways. We've done reviews where people are like, oh no, they gotta have them crunchy, like real crunchy. I like them like this with a little crunch in the exterior and they're nice and soft yeah. on the inside. The buffalo chicken. It's very good. It's a it's a traditional buffalo sauce, but a good one. Very yeah. vinegar heavy, right? And the blue cheese does a decent job mimicking the real thing for being vegan. Yeah, it it tastes as you close would have to an easier time tricking someone with this and telling them that this than that biscuits and gravy. I agree. Disaster. This is a seven for me. No way. Yeah. Especially vegan. I think if you're vegan, this is the item to get this year. Also, quick note: that is a garden graze item. Um, so now we have two. They look their little potato barrels on the stamp. Oh, they're cute. They're per it's perfect. It's not something elevated. It's not something crazy. But what it is is. I'm gonna fantastic. go six. I'm gonna go six. That's fine. But I'm surprised that it held up this well because we we did photograph this. I mean, it's ten minutes old. No, not even that. That might be ten minutes old. Yeah, that and the like ice cream drink. Four. I just don't want to put this it's in the same hot. pantheon I told as you that, it was super is that drink. Hot. There are different things, Eric. I know you hate veganism. <laughs> no, that's not true. I like it. It's not for good. me. It's not for me, but yeah, I understand. There also we have a cocktail. Uh, we have the frozen mojito with Boyd and Blair rum. Don't use that as a straw. It's not. But it like sugar, sugar cane. cane. Yeah. I feel like I'm in the deep south, enjoying a nice warm afternoon. Why are suddenly all the drinks at this event strong? Did they finally listen, Mr. <laughs> Eric? Everything is very strong. <laughs> I'm very honored to have Foghorn Leghorn with us today, reviewing drinks. Katie, Foghorn Leghorn was... <laughs> What's the... 
It was semi murky frozen. thing. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. It has. It's a hot day. It has not uh, survived. But it's. I mean, it potent. So I don't generally like mojitos, but I like this. It's good. I can drink it very minty and refreshing. Easy, easy drinking despite being strong. Yeah. Six. Yeah, yeah I'll give it a six. Yeah. I, yeah, we're being very kind to the cocktails all of a sudden. It's because we're on the media list. Most of the kind. It's because they're strong. Yeah, mo no, most most of the festival cocktails I don't like. These are, I think, been pretty good. I think maybe they listen because we've had three, and I thought, wow, these are much stronger than our typical cocktails, but yeah, also sure. better put together in general. Um, and food so far, we're, we're doing pretty well. It's if we get towards Italy though, it's going to be downhill. I feel it, Eric. Is this Italy's year? No. No. It's never Italy issue. <laughs> Let's move on. All right, we're doing a couple of booths here. Well, I guess Joffrey's, eh, it's a booth, sure. It is definitely a booth. So near Canada, you went to Joffrey's and you picked up the Citrus Frosted Iced Tea, which is a tangy blend of frozen lemonade, Minute Maid lemonade, iced tea, and orange tangerine syrup garnished with a glazed orange peel. Uh, but you got this with alcohol. What alcohol is in here? Grey Goose Vodka. Grey Goose, more vodka. It is $8.50 more for the vodka shot. You did the single? Yeah, I just got a single. Joking. We're, we're pretty lit already from those little... Are you? No. They were strong, though, but I didn't drink much. Should I, should I go? Go for it. That is a very nice iced tea with alcohol in it. The, the vodka's pretty masked. Is it there? I hope so. Is there vodka in it? Honestly, I'm not positive. I don't it think so. It doesn't taste like it. It's a, a thimble of vodka, perhaps. It's a nice iced tea, but I, it's nothing particularly special. You know? I don't know. I wouldn't get it. I don't think it's worth no, it. No, I give it like two sporks. It's it's just, I, it just two. tastes like iced tea to me. I mean, it's refreshing. It's hot out. We might have got Maybe Joffrey did a number on us. We might have got screwed mm -hmm. at eight bucks. Wouldn't be the first time, and it won't be the last. You just put it there. We have people running. Oh, the look at this. There's just food showing up. And getting stuff. From the food so. runners. So let's start. Now we're in France for Fleur, Fleur de Lis. Ah, oui, oui. we. And Fleur de Lis has uh, new this year the Pommentier, the Canard L'Orange, the Pulled Duck uh, Confit with orange sauce and a garlic rosemary mashed potato. It tastes like Thanksgiving. It just tastes like Thanksgiving. I mean, the orange is... Yeah. It's there. It's potent. I don't think um, it's potent. It's present. Maybe you got... I don't know. Get more of the gravy. More. I, I mean, the orange is definitely there. I don't think it's overwhelming, but it's it's for sure going to hit you in the face. It's there. Um, it still tastes like the Thanksgiving. The duck is perfect. Yeah. It's super it soft like turkey, and right? tender. And, yeah, a little bit. Dark meat. Yeah, and the mashed potatoes. This is uh, great. Yeah, it's great. I... Five? Yeah, like a five. Five. I think five. This I'm is not the season five. for this, yeah. though, an event from yeah, this March is fall to, food. Yeah, it's, I don't want to eat that today. No. But it's good. All right, we'll be right back with uh, Isla de Fresca. La Isla Fresca between France and Morocco. New this year vegan option, the Impossible Jamaican Beef Patty with spicy papaya syrup. I'm so excited. I love Jamaican beef patties. My mother used Even to bring them home impossible. from work. This is, how, many, how many like vegan or vegetarian things have we had? A lot. A lot. That's I mean, it's lot. flour and garden. Uh, vegan food is what grows in the garden, Eric, and what you eat does not. <laughs> Very good. Yeah? Spicy. Eric liked the vegan dish. I think when they make the, like, the vegan meat really spicy, it's pretty good. See, I'll agree with you. Like My favorite vegan stuff I've had is... You, you, you hide that it's not the real thing with spice and, and flavor. Then you, do you pretend to tell people, do you tell people that it's sausage and gravy, biscuits and gravy, and it's really... You're never going to let me hear the end of it. It's got a kick. It's, it's phenomenal. This is actually like, this might be my first savory seven. I'm with you. And... You get a little bit of sweetness from the exterior of the sauce. The pastry's cooked perfectly. It's flaky and crisp. And then there's just a load. It's gigantic. Like it is loaded with beef. I'll take a shot after we yeah, do that. But that's, we'll come back to that because I need to shoot that inside. But um, dessert, 
I remember seeing this. This is coconut? not new. This is, this is old, isn't it? it? Looks like coconut. Coconut tres leches. Okay. A vanilla cake soaked with oat, almond, and coconut milks topped with toast to coconut vegan once again. Is this a garden graze item? Uh, I should have popped a Zyrtec. It is. I we didn't get house. a stamp. I got to send someone back oh, for boy. a stamp. Oh, no. Oh, man. It's pretty good. Especially on the front. At the end, the flavor kind of just disappeared. That's very good. Like the a piece of fruit so, stripe gum. So moist. It's really moist. That's a six for me. It is a little one note, like you said. It's really good, and then the flavor's gone. Yeah. Fruit stripe gum, still good. I'd, I'd give it a six. I'd give it a six. Yeah, but it's, it's it, the coconut flavor is not overwhelming. Uh, nice, rich cream on top, but a little one note. What do we have here, Tom? Well, this isn't in the book. I have to go to our checklist. Uh, the United Kingdom beer cart, which Eric is very familiar with, has a specialty cocktail for the event. Uh, this is the Scottish Thistle. It's forged gin with lemon and blackcurrant cucumber syrup garnished with an actual cucumber. Very well. Bottoms up. If you want to see my skin turn red, just give me some yeah. gin. How is it? It's very cucumbery. Would you think by the by the title? Would you think yeah. that? Kind of like a seed. Oh in wow. There. It's super refreshing. Though. Yeah. It's nice for today's weather. Nice and ice cold. But yeah, that's you're gonna need to love cucumber a lot. Um, you got like something in there. But it's good. Chunks. Very syrupy sweet though. That's that's pretty. Some different. people are really gonna like that. That's very unique. I don't think I've had anything like that. At Some the people are really gonna like that. Eric gives it a four. Yeah, four out of seven, sure. But I think for some people at home, it'll be higher. Yeah. We also had to go back to the Canada popcorn cart because they decided to get in on the fun this year, too, with a peach smash. It's Canadian Club whiskey, Josh's favorite, uh, with lemon, peach puree, and ginger. Our good friend Josh from Easy Dubs would be very should proud. Should we stir it up a we little? We should. Yeah, go for it. Did it separate a little? may have. Tastes kind of like a mule. Has that gingery, a whiskey mule. It's too syrupy sweet for a me. A little bit. I mean, I did see they did not prepare it fresh. It it's did a, come out a, of a big jug. It's a batch. Uh, it's note, uh, notable that this is $11.50. So like $5 cheaper than the uh, tea from the Joffrey's booth that and may or may not have had alcohol in it. Cheaper than the other cocktails we've had, which are not regular size like this is. Yeah, so it's a good yeah. buy. I don't, like you, like you said, it's a little syrupy. It's too sweet It kind of tastes like... I don't even taste the whiskey because like the, the ginger Swedish beer is so... It's like the ginger beer mule, yeah. I don't even really taste the peach. I mostly just taste ginger. Yeah, I can't. It's too much. This is like two That's sporks. a one for me. One spike to be spork from Tom, two for me. That, we'll give it a one and a half then. All right. It's time for everyone's part of the review when Nana comes in and screams. <laughs> I haven't screamed yet today. Well, it's still early. Uh, we're going to first have some uh, one item from the Tangerine Cafe Flavors of the Medina, which is going to be Morocco. Uh, it's a Mediterranean flatbread with tremula, roasted vegetables, artichoke, olives, and feta cheese. I'm not even sure I can eat that. What are you allergic to? Well, I am not allergic, but I don't like the you know, fancy <laughs> stuff that is... Awesome. Fancy? Eh? This highfalutin, this highfalutin yeah, flatbread. So, so, look, your friends are looking at you. I got friends on the other side. Yeah. They're not up in the tree, don't worry. I will not get pooped on like a flower and garden. Itadakimasu. Uh, not sure I can eat, but... I ain't okay. got food on me. I'm doing great. It's actually very good. The crust is nice and soft. It has a nice charred edge, but it's soft and doughy in the inside. Um, the toppings are fantastic. You know what is this thing for? This flatbread is for the California girls, not for me. Like, you know the fancy girls that have I wish they all could beat California girls, Nana. Those East, girl, those East Coast girls are kind of hip. I like the styles they wear. But ah. There's no idea what I'm talking about. Um, very good, all very fresh. A lot of earthy flavors, right? The roasted vegetables, the artichoke olives. It's a really nice mix. I love this. I'm going to give this a 6 out of 7. Maji! Okay. That is one of the best fast food pizzas at Disney World. Happy to hear that. No, you don't agree? I mean, I just don't like all the fancy stuff on, the, on top of it. I'm a child. I like the cheese pizza, so... 
If I come in from there, then it's like too adult for me. Remember adult sweet? It's adult pizza. Remember adult what? Adult sweet Kit Kat. Adult sweet Japanese. Adult sweet Kit Kat? You don't remember? Oh, yeah. Ta-da! What is adult sweet though? I don't remember. It's not too sweet, but not... The subtle sweetness? No, decent sweet. But kids get the super sweet. Mm -hmm. And Americans. In Japan, all desserts are very subtle. It's a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Hanami, which is Hanami. in the Japan Pavilion, um, uh, returning is the frushi, but new items, the steam bun filled with vegetable and plant-based soy meat. What? It's soy, gonna melt soon. Soy meat? Some. You have to eat your regular food first and then you could have dessert. No, 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 what is soy meat? Not real meat, it's vegan. It's a oh, vegan dish. Why are Japanese people doing that? Because they feel bad for the Americans. Did you see? There's a vegan meal in yeah. Fantasy Springs. I was shocked. The, Just rip it. Just rip it. I, I can feel the meatball in the middle. If I had a nickel for every time a girl oh. told me that. Murder. <laughs> Look at that meatball. Mm, just like a Nona used to make. <laughs> Why Japanese Cheers. people? Why? Why Japanese people? Why? Oh. <laughs> it's a little bland. It is. Do you know 7 Eleven sells those buns in Japan? Yeah. It tastes like that. I'm happy. The texture feels very authentic to me. Yeah. For sure. I. The taste is very. You don't think it's too subtle? You don't think, like, not a lot of flavor? I mean, it's sweet. I mean. It is sweet, you're right. I mean, obviously, like, Japan always make these for Americans and people here to yeah. make it sweeter than anything else, because that's what people love here. So it's not like authentic flavor, but it's close enough. You know what's authentic? A bun, yeah, the yeah, bun yeah. is bun fantastic, is, yes, isn't yes. it? Bun is on point, yeah. Yeah. It's like a gilded dog from Japan. It it does remind me, even the texture of the vegan meat reminds me of the gyoza dog. Yeah. I just don't like the flavor, but I will tell you, I think if you're vegan, this is great. I think you're gonna love it. Yeah. Five out of seven? You I'll let you do the ranking. You think better than that? It's is sort of dry outside. If it's a little bit moisture, I'll give them six, but five is okay to me. But again, I think if you're, um, you know, if you're interested in the vegan dishes, I think it's worth a try. You know, I'm gonna give it the six. I've, I'm, I've come around on it. I am not a vegan, but I still can eat this. Because you know, I had a, another impossible something in that, an animal kingdom. I didn't like it, but this no. one, good. We're all capable of eating vegan. We just choose not to. Shake I, your, shake your ramen cup. I don't. Uh, do I supposed to shake it? That's what he told me. He's like, make sure to shake well. Don't take the lid off and shake it. Leave the lid on and give it a shake. Shake, shake. No, like you gotta really. This what are you is a singing? this is a Japanese song called Shake. Okay. It's popular. If you go to Japan, you will hear it. I will go. You should book a trip real soon. Oh I'm a China. Oh, it's really good. Use it, use it, use it. it. Smells good. Use it, yeah, it's a use it something. I All see. Right, get in there, man. Hi. I'm hoping this. So is the ramen not cup, way. ramen salad shaken in a cup with fresh vegetables, grilled chicken, and dashi broth with chili oil and yuzu. It's definitely gonna be a good one. I'm hoping. It smells good. I know. Right? The question will be the noodle quality. Okay. I think this is the best menu they ever created in Japan that I covered the festival so far in my life in here. This is good in the summer. Why yeah, in the you summer? You didn't like it? Oh, it's certainly not bad. I think I could make ramen of a similar quality at home from a package for a dollar. That is true, but like it is. That is true. You want people to come have this at a festival? It's, I will say it's good. I mean, I really like it. I, the this sauce is more is than great. I expected. I'm gonna give it a five. 5.5. But I don't value-wise, it's just a cup of ramen. How much was it? I don't remember. It'll show up at the bottom of their screen. So let me say this. The noodle is kind of overcooked, but the sauce is on point. 
it's nice citrusy and a little savory. So in the summer, it's really nice. The so sauce I, is very nice. Yeah, highly recommend it for the summer. Like these. See, I like the noodles like that. Hurra! They're a little chewy. Mm. But that's how I like my spaghetti, but that's an Italian thing. I like the heart spaghetti, not the soft spaghetti. Hey, you like heart spaghetti or soft spaghetti? I like it like that. A little yeah. chewy. Yeah, five. All right, we have drinks. Usually we don't get the alcoholic and the non-alcoholic, but I think there was a miscommunication. We got um, the booze last time. Did we? All right. Um, because the names are different, I think it confused them. Um, there's a watermelon strawberry lemonade, which is going to be that one. So start with that. That's the non-alcoholic. This is probably going to be terrible. Syrup. I hate that. It's just sugar and syrup. It tastes like cheap, like if you bought like a bottled Why? juice. Why Japan made this? That's my question. I don't know. Because money. Oh, God. Uh, and then the alcoholic, I think sake could save this, so we'll see. Ichigo Breeze, which is sake with the strawberry and watermelon. I think some alcohol could save it. I don't taste any alcohol. It's definitely in there. Did you? There's definitely sake in there. Oh, yeah. It's not as powerful as the other cocktails we have, but it's in there. Um, I would give the non-alcoholic a one. Yeah. I would I wanna, give this like a three. I want to mix with Sprite. This certainly makes it better, but it's, I still don't really, it's too syrupy. It's, it's a batch cocktail. It's not my thing. Eric's pushing a funnel cake my way. I want to see Nana eat the funnel cake. Okay. To make her happy, I guess. Well, Nana. No, Nana is happy with the ramen. We're moving on to the, my favorite country in World Showcase, funnel cake. Funnel's good. This is the funnel cake kiosk just a few steps away. It is a funnel cake. It doesn't have a special name. Funnel cake with powdered sugar, vanilla ice cream, strawberries, whipped cream, strawberry glaze, and strawberry crunch. Why they put all the strawberries? It's a strawberry funnel cake. Okay. It doesn't matter if you like it, Nana. We just gotta eat it. get it Find out who you are. Let's go. Figment beer me strength. You can see that strawberry crunch kind of up on the whipped cream. There's the block of vanilla ice cream in the middle. There's vanilla ice cream, that's square. Oh, ice, ice. I want ice. Okay. The block. Oh, the funnel cake's nice and soft. They always cook these so well. These are always a home run, man. That's good, I like it. I mean, they're funnel cakes. Oh my goodness. Nande, you are eating. Mm. What, are you, what are you taking umbrage with? Thomas, I'm eating my spot, but it's okay. Your spot? That was my spot, I don't It's just that I haven't eaten the funnel cake. It's so perfectly cooked. It's so soft. It's got this rich sweetness. Phenomenal. The whipped cream adds to it. Um, the ice cream, perfect accompaniment. Just enough strawberry flavor. It's not overwhelming. A sweet strawberry glaze. That strawberry crunch is not, it's, it's more decoration than it is anything else. It's not giving me any flavor or anything. Let me try a little off the top, but I don't think there's anything really going on. This is, this is a seven. But we know we usually give them the top score anyway. It never disappoints me. Every time I come here no. and I eat that, never disappoints me. Even when it's flavors that are not my favorite, right? Like a strawberry top funnel cake is not my number one choice. This is spectacular. I would have this again. Seven. Yeah, seven. Eric, it's time to do our quarterly penance here at the Italy booth, uh, which is oh, called Figment Help Us. Primavera Kitchen, which means mostly uncooked, I believe, in Italian. <laughs> Sure. Um, you guys ate here. I missed it at Foda. I was at the media thing. You ate at Italy and you guys said it was okay? I recall it being unremarkable, which is really good it's for the Italy booth. Step up for sure. Uh, we have four items because they hate us. Uh, the bocconcini, which is mozzarella bocconcini, grape tomatoes, and a pesto sauce. I mean, we definitely start with that. It's kind of a appetizer. Eric's going to love this. You go first. I'll do some pot. This is, how are you going to, wow. I get, oh, I'm there's the cheese. Up mozzarella. It'd be hard. It'd be real hard. It's not bad. How many sporks out of seven? Four? It's, it's pretty good super for basic. There's nothing wrong with it though. It's like supermarket quality mozzarella, um, tomatoes. They're fresh enough. Pesto sauce isn't offensive. 
It's perfectly fine. And it's cute All presentation. Right. It's in a pot. Uh, this is the arrabbiata, which is penne de pasta, spicy tomato sauce, and buttery shrimp. I like it. You know, the, the sauce is good because it's, it's like a decent spicy red sauce. The shrimp are not fishy. No, they're not bad. The pasta could be better. It's not great. It's but a little al dente. In general, I would probably get this again. Do you really want to be the first? Do you want to be the first person in WDWND history to say you would get something again from the Italy movie? No, I, I think it's five out of seven sporks. I don't think it's bad. I hate to agree. I like I the do. spicy. I like the spicy sauce. Do you have the receipt? And, yeah. How much is that? It's it's a hefty portion. I'm curious if, if it's super expensive though. Uh, Nine twenty-five. I don't think that's bad for 925. I'm gonna agree on the five. I mean, theme park scale of pricing, 925 is not terrible. It's a five and out of seven. It's, I like the it's kick decent. in the sauce. The sauce has more kick, like, a, you know, a little bit later. So it's a, a good plate. sauce. The shrimp is fine. It's not fishy. It is a little buttery as advertised. Yeah. They could have put this with a different pasta and it probably would have been better too. I think they just could have cooked that better. Yeah. But. This has got to be a This, come on. This looks That's like it's out of a college dorm room or, or my Quattro barracks formage. when I was stationed in Guantanamo Bay. Quattro formage, a panna de pasta with the four cheese sauce. What are the four cheeses? The cheeses Name have them. been together so long <laughs> that they look like one. We are one kind of cheese now. We are one. The flavor of the, the cheese is not bad. Oh. The pasta's cooked better in this dish than that one, though, I will say. It's a it's better batch. It's the same pasta. It's a better batch. It's softer. Yeah. And I don't... I kind of like the cheese. Two. This is way better than it looks, though. No, it's at three or four. On In, in the Midwest, They yeah. should put maybe some chicken or something with it. In the Northeast, this is a... She's a Northeast, too. Three and a half. Three and a half. It's not terrible. It's we not don't offensive. do halves. Don't do halves. You let Nana do a half. No, I, I told that. her no. Okay, then it's a four. All right. Uh, there is a uh, chocolate cannoli with peanut butter ricotta filling. There's no knives, so we just have to do the fork braid. Not since they once served someone a microwaved ravioli <laughs> and they tried to cut them. It's not a cannoli. It's kind of chalky. What did they do to the cannoli shell? The cannoli shell tastes like chalk. So it's in this the nice milk good. chocolate. Uh, the, the peanut butter ricotta filling is fantastic, but the cannoli's inedible. It's really chalky. I don't like the cannoli, but I like everything else look about at, it. Look at, get in here, Jake. It look, you can see it's like powdered inside the chocolate shell. Like it looks like it's powdered. It looks like we bit into a slab of concrete. You ever broken concrete? That's what it looks like on the edge, that like powdery white edge. Look at that. It's a shame because they had a good base there, but the cannoli is gross. It almost tastes more like a chocolate covered pretzel because of it. Yeah. But it's not like the good kind though. It's too chalky. No, it, it tastes, it has the consistency of like a malted milk ball, like a, the inside of a Whopper. I think that's mean to Whoppers. Ugh. I'm a big Whopper guy. I think it's way chalkier. That's too bad. I. It's too bad because I think the rest of it the milk chocolate. Somebody did a good job. Milk with. chocolate's good. The, the, and the, the shell is just and the, awful. And the filling is great. Um, it's this rich peanut butter, you know, cream flavor. Yeah. The flavors could save it, but I, I have mean, to give it a, a we're two talking about for a that. Two. It's, it's, a two. it's called a cannoli. It's the vessel, and the vessel is bad. Welcome to China. Although we're starting with the refreshment outpost, which is that way, you know, the Coca Cola location. Uh, because they have a seasonal fruit parfait with sweet chili sauce and mango Dole Whip. What's the fruit, Wendy? Pineapple and watermelon. Pineapple and watermelon. They said that might change for the festival as things go in and out of season, I guess. But, you know. Um, you want to try it? Yep. The sweet chili sauce is something called... or um, There's also tahini in there for sure. I see the tahini. But there is a chili sauce, too. It's not my thing. Same. People will probably like this. I don't know. I don't like mango, so. I like mango sometimes, but there's a lot going on here. And then the chunks, they're like, man, we're the wrong audience. There's so much to keep track this. of. You I'm, had one earlier today, right? Did yeah. you like it? I'm not a big mango fan either, but I mainly got it because I love that seasoning, that sauce. Okay, yeah. It's better if you get a big bite of it. 
Okay. I got a big bite of it, and it was weird. Yeah, I just... I, I, I think everything was good on its own. I, th I can see that there are people that are going to love this. For me, it's like a two. Yeah, mango and watermelon, and it's not... I will warn you, we may not be the best people to review this item, but it's a two for us. In China, the Lotus House... Uh, that's Where do you want to start, Tom? Let's start with the Lucky Peach. Peach whiskey, oolong tea, honey lemon juice, soda water. Peach seems to be a theme this year. I'm going to use... Right? You know how they sometimes they do like beets? This year is peach. That's because Princess Peach Showtime is coming out on Nintendo Switch. They're a proud sponsor of this I'm joking. They're not. You know who is, though? Tom, I got to say, we've been at it for a long time today. It's getting late in the day. And I'm still comfortable in this shirt by our friends at Park Candy. And Union. there's still room... Yes, yeah. I like yours in particular with the little tiki birds. I and do. I'm a They're very cute. I don't have that one. And there's all the flowers. You can go to parkcandy.com um, or you can go to www.nt.link/parkcandy. Either way, if you use the uh, discount code WDWNT at checkout, you have fifteen percent off. Helps us. Helps them. Please support support the people who support this content. We're gonna blow away because bubble tea doesn't buy itself. Okay. All right. So the try peach. try the lucky peach. So it doesn't numb your mouth like a fuzzy tauntaun, but it, ha it takes you to that edge where you feel like there's some kind of something going on. It's not bad. It's not. It's drinkable. This is more, we're like, as we get later in the day, I feel like we're getting more and more of the like jugs we're getting of pre-made We're back to junk. normal. Yeah, like normal festival sure. drinks that are kind That's of watered down. as and syrupy as usual though. It's, it's fine, it's pretty refreshing. It's a little sticky though. It is a little, not as much as usual though. It's it's fine. I'll give it a three. Yeah, I was gonna, I was exactly I was gonna say a three. We agree yeah. too much on this. Do you want to try the Dragon Dynasty again? Bijou Spirit Light Rum, Dragon Fruit Syrup, Pina Colada Mix, and Soda Water. I would. We have straws now. If you want to stir with that, I have a spoon. I'm very happy for you, Eric. And as you know, all day long, if the spoon didn't work, I've been carrying around Spike the, the Spike the Beast fork. Spike Sadly, the not available this Spike year. Spike the bean. Is there coconut in this? Buys you spirit, light rum. It might be a coconut rum. Uh, dragon fruit, a pina colada mix. That's what it is. It tastes a little like, like suntan lotion, but in a good way. I think this is wonderful. This is probably going to be my drink of choice. Yeah, this is wonderful. It tastes like the Hawaiian Tropic swimsuit team came and hung out with you drinking. It's nice and refreshing. For a hot day like today, I like this. Um, it's a little... Like a little bitter, I, I still think it's like a, a a five or six. I'm gonna go four. Really? Okay, I'll go five. It's a, there's like this bitter aftertaste. I'm not digging. In the uh, group of the later in the day, watered down out of a jug cocktails, this one stands solid. above the rest. Yeah. Just so. mango bubble tea. That's all it says. The boba is flavorless. The the tea is refreshing. I like it. The boba is like flavorless. I don't understand why it's in there. I don't know. Three? I get I mean, three sporks. It's nothing special. No, but I mean, it's a, it's going to be hot these couple months. You know, I, you, you, you make a fair point, though. Like, I like a lot of bubble tea. This is a pretty nondescript it's also, bubble It also tea. feels kind of sticky to me. Yeah, like, I'll, go, I'll go three with you. But it's, it's really just a mango juice with boba balls in it. But the boba balls are pretty flavorless. I got nothing from them. Yeah, they just... Yeah. All right. We're burning daylight. We're out for China. Move on. Well, Tom, we are we are in the home stretch. You don't look so good. We're in Mexico, Eric. I just want to put the last couple days in frame for everybody. Yesterday, I did the whole new menu at Mel's, which you can watch on Universal Parks News Today, our sister channel. Annie does a fantastic job. Please go watch that. Also, Circus McGurkis was recent, but yesterday was Mel's. Today. 60 new items, I think. We never counted. What would you say at this festival? And then Friday, we are going to fly to California where you and I have to eat 50 new items at the California Food and Wine Fest. Luckily, we get to sleep in until about 3 a.m. for our 5 a.m. flight to California, straight to DCA for the We have to do news wine. tonight, tomorrow night, and I have to film news today. Probably don't sleep, and then get on an airplane at 6 in the 5 something in the morning. So it's a great week. I think food. eating food professionally was a mistake. Really? Being kidnapped? Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. News tonight, I'm getting kidnapped. Where in the world is Tom Corliss? Anywhere but here would suffice. Uh, Be happy. Look at us at a festival. 
I, know I will the tell you, crooked, on the bright side, okay. on the bright side, the food and drink have been better than usual. I yeah. Guess, so. That may change now. We went in a different direction, right? Than usual, so I don't know. But Jardim de Fiestas, which is garden party, right? Yeah. I think. Uh, is Mexico, and uh, they have five new items, which uh, we'll begin with the Sope de Chilorio, which is Gualajilo, Guajilo pepper, braised pork on fried corn shells with black beans, shredded cabbage, crema mexicana, queso fresco, and chives. Oh, yeah. Yeah? This looks like 50 other things I've had from this booth over mm -hmm. the years. It tastes like them. Then why'd you make a pleasant sound? Because sometimes it's good. I think this is good. I think this is very good. Wow. Compared to usual? It's less dry and chalky than usual. It was a little tough at first. I was worried when I started cutting it, but I think it... The shell could be better, but the, the meat is fantastic. It's like a six. I would go five. Five? Okay. I have seven say, sporks. Yeah. Five I, actually, is, Eric, it, I don't know. It's a little dry. It's, I might go four. All right, I go six. You have four. But the, to describe it a little bit, like the pork is solid. The pork is good. I, th I like the flavor of that. Black beans are good. Yep. And Everything else going the on shell? there. What do you the call shell? The shell is a little dry. It, but I like the flavor of it. That. Yeah. Better than the usual weird flavor. stuff they put underneath the, the meat. Can we talk about this thing? What about it? Is this a carrot that was like tortured? And Eric's never seen a carrot. I've never seen um, one that was sliced this thin in this direction before. It's a little troubling. This is the tamale de rajas, poblano peppers, corn, and cheese in masa, topped with poblano cream sauce, crema mexicana, pickled carrot, and onions and chives. Move the watery margaritas. You don't know they're watery yet. You haven't eaten them. I have them. an idea. It's a little one no. It's a little, like, is doughy the word? It's a little... Yeah. I think the flavors are good. I'm getting a corn flavor, right? Yeah, very corn. And it sits on a corn husk. It tastes like a, if you took a corn tortilla and turned it into like a dough, right? right? If you took a corn taco tortilla. I mean, isn't that kind of what it is, like a corn yeah. dough? Yeah, it's like a, it's got that flavor profile of a, of a corn tortilla. I'm not but. getting a lot. It's one, it's I mean, not very, it's very one note. There's not a whole lot going on. I think this is a two. It's like a three. We give it a three. Mexico always ends up like miss the mark. We can, we're so mean to Italy that we I think sometimes forget to be mean to Mexico because I don't like this booth either. I, I never like their margaritas in Mexico, but sometimes they have some dishes. There's there. occasionally a dessert that is fantastic. This flan, could I mean, be flan de guayaba, vanilla flan with guava culi, whipped cream, and fresh fruit. I think it's good. The texture is good. The flavor is good. That uh, it took a second for that. Uh, that guava took me by surprise a little bit. Oh, I love it. Yeah, it was took me a minute to like adjust my uh, palate to go. Oh, it's guava. It that sauce is thick, and yeah. you know the guava is going to punch you in the face. Yeah. Um, I, but the flan evens it out nicely. The sweetness of the flan. Yeah. This is a six. Um, yeah, I can get behind a six. I think a six is a fair. It's assessment. a good size too, right? It's yeah. a big dessert. Two or three people could share this, I think, and be happy about it as a festival thing. But yeah, it's not bad. It's pretty good. One of the better things we've had in a while. Yeah. Well, Eric, it's unfortunately time. All right. So they've had some Give weird- Give me one margarita. They've had some weird stuff I'm gonna over the years. I'm going to end the review. Give me two margaritas. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, so there's a lychee margarita, uh, which is going to be Cent Centinella Blanco Tequila. Lychee, lychee liqueur, citrus juice, and agave nectar. Stir it. Stir it. Okay. I will say with, with lychee drinks, I am ruined for life by the fog cutter. Yeah. That was at Trader Sam's for Halloween one year, which was the worst drink I've ever had in my entire life. Where I think they were convinced they could serve us anything because we were buying the mug. So we'd drink whatever. It's kind of awful. It's the obligatory thing when we're in this area for every festival or we go, there's, a, there's an aftertaste of chloroseptic. There's some sort of like medicinal taste. It tastes like everything I've had here for 10 yeah. years. It, but you're right, medicinal is the word. There's like this, this like artificial fruit medicinal aftertaste. 
Yeah, I, I don't like the aftertaste at all. They're, like, I can't describe it otherwise. Like, I can't tell you what notes I'm getting. I, I couldn't tell you. This is a one. Now, at any other festival, this would be Beats. It's not Beat, is it? By Dr. Dre? Yeah, Beats by Dr. Oh, Dre. Man. You get a nice cup, though. Floral margarita. I do like the cup. Cherry liqueur, mezcal, hibiscus tea, and lime juice with a sweet, chili, salt rim. You know, there's no salt on the rim. It's okay. We were, earlier, we had a drink with no vodka in it. So, no salt in the rim. Small price to pay. Let me guess. It's syrupy? It's oh. the same medicinal thing. I'm not getting that smokiness of the mezcal. Instead, I'm getting like a... Like I have a strep throat. They all throat taste and, the same yeah, this every doesn't... time. They call them different things. They list different ingredients, but I never feel like these are different. These, doesn't that taste kind of like that? A little bit, but there's definitely fruit in here. Yeah. But still the overpowering aftertaste I get is It's less syrupy than in years past, I will say. This is a little more drinkable than usual. This is way better than that, though. This is a three. Yeah, I think a three is fair. It's slightly better, plus you get that nice cup. Which, I don't know what you do with the cup, but you I know take that home. You I have them at home, yeah. yeah. People use them. They, they last. I don't like that they're not stackable. Neither right. are we. <laughs> Eric, um, we got to talk about this. We ate over a third of this tamale and hit nothing. There's a giant glob of cheese in there. Try it with the glob of cheese. It's weird that it's stuffed with cheese, but... It was all on one end. You have to get past the halfway mark to find it. I like the green chilies. I'm not sure the cheese makes it a whole lot better. It's just, it's still one note. Even though it's a different ingredient, I'm still just like. I think it's, I think, I actually think it's a little better, but I don't think it's enough to improve its grade. No, I think it stays where it is. It's, yeah. I just wanted to make sure people knew that. Um, there is filling. Other than the corn tortilla flavor, there is a glob of cheese in there and it's, it's, it's still not better. Trowel and trellis nearby, near the Disney traders. Uh, impossible farmhouse meatball with lentil bread, spinach, marinated vegetables, and creamy herb aioli. And that was a stamp for us. Well, not in this book, another book. Uh, but it is the Garden Grays. It's also vegan. It's plant-based. Eric, you've eaten so much vegan food today. I'm so proud. I'm, like, legitimately proud of you. Wait till we get to California in a couple days. I don't know how much that festival has. Maybe, probably less than this. You would think that. You know how hard it is to eat vegan, especially sit-down restaurants? We had the hardest time at sit-down restaurants in California. It's near impossible. Counter service, fantastic. Vegan stuff, very hard. Uh, like Carthay, I've been at Carthay Circle a million times. Only bad meal we've had at Carthay, a vegan dish. But, um, okay, so, go ahead. You, but you know the sausage that you like? Is it gonna they have a like property? That? It's comparable. It's very spicy. There's a lot of seasoning to kind of probably mask the fa fact that it's like imitation meat. And I think the spices work, make it easy to swallow, easy to eat, and it's actually pleasant. It's pretty different from the sausage, but I do like it. Um, Texture-wise, taste-wise, it doesn't taste far off from a real meatball. Yeah. Um, but you're right. I'm that spice. It's a slow burn on the back end. Yeah. Um, the the pita's great too. Like is, is that it, a pita? I just thought it was like a. It's a. It's almost like a tortilla. It's like the lentil uh, bread. Lentil bread. Okay, it wasn't. It's bad. fantastic. I love it. I would absolutely have this again. I love yep. it. I think it's good. This is a seven. Yeah, seven. Seven. I'm gonna go seven. Eric went seven on a vegan. Mm -hmm. I went close. I went close to so, seven on those tater tots. Right? Maybe I'm just tired. This the used dirt, to be, though, I draw the line at eating dirt. After Mexico, I'm ready. Um, this used to be marked as plant-based. It used to be marked as vegan. It's not anymore. So we don't know what changed. Put some um, milk in it. But the chocolate mousse terrarium with matcha crumble and chocolate soil is now not plant-based. I don't think I need to eat the flour. <laughs> I'm trying to evaluate the dish, flour. Not, not the flour. Green stuff. It makes my tummy go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, on the dishes earlier today, the the flour kind of spoiled the uh, avocado toast for me. It's fine. There's nothing special about this. I love this. Really? It's it's fine. I, I mean, you need to be a chocolate lover. It is it is chocolate. I like overload. chocolate. I just go get the bottom. You got to get the bottom because it's very different on the bottom. The chocolate soil. 
chocolate soil. So it's like a chocolate pudding with a You're right with a crunchy, with a crunchy soil on the bottom. I don't know, it's a five? Five. But I, I think it'll please a lot of people. Also, it takes a cute picture. This looks like dirt. Um, didn't I believe this used to come in the themed cup, but it doesn't anymore. Uh, but also used to be vegan and it's no longer. Uh, but a solid chocolate dessert for sure. Oh, Drinks. The drink. We have the alcoholic and the non-alcoholic. This will be the non-alcoholic since it's in the souvenir cup. No, it's opposite. That's the alcohol. They put alcohol in a souvenir yeah, cup? The gin's on top. So ra raspberry and lemon herbal tea with twinings, raspberry and lemon herbal tea, and simply limeade. Uh, conniption kinship gin. Conniption? That's what I'm going to be having after all this. Woo! That's light and refreshing. And... Kiss wrote a song I like about it. cold gin. I know I've said light and refreshing mm -hmm. a million times. There's an overall theme with these drinks, yeah. right? Um, I'm running out of ads. It's also not overly sweet, so it's, it's fairly uh, like a No, neutral. the raspberry and lemon are, are pretty subdued, yeah. and they both uh, come up together, so you get both evenly, I think, in the, in the flavor profile. Um, refreshing, light, uh, and despite being a cocktail, I think it'll you'll feel it, but also you won't necessarily taste it. The best cocktail we've had in um, a couple hours. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, but in fairness, we're also back to Disney ownership. It's not a third party. It's not yeah. an operating participant, if you will. And then you want to try it without alcohol? If I have to. I think of the non-alcoholic stuff. That's one of my. That's one of the better juice drinks we've had today. I like that. I would. I would drink that. Yeah, it's weird. I think this should be served in more like a, a bigger cup. You know, because refreshing, shareable. This one's non alcoholic. You, you don't want to sample that, you want to be refreshed by right. it. Right. You, you could drink this for a while. I feel like this would just kind of tickle my fancy and then I would still be thirsty. <laughs> well, now that Eric's fancy is tickled, let's move on. Sometimes it's easier than other times. Well, Tom, these both look kind of the same. They're not, though. One's in a champagne glass and one is in a cone. Oh, no. What are it's you, dripping. blind? What are you it's <laughs> dripping. Of course it's dripping, it's 80 degrees. Swirled Showcase, wow, that opened right to the page. That's a magnificent moment. Um, so this is a strawberry basil sorbet in a waffle cone. Have some, no, let me feed you. <laughs> Weirdo. Open wide. The whole thing. I'm not traumatized. Also, I don't love it. No? No. With all the, they've had so many creative things with the peanut butter and jelly, soft serve. No, it, There's been so much good it, stuff. It's this not is, creamy. It's like a sorbet. It's it just tastes icy. It's yeah, just it just not, tastes like ice. Yeah. yeah. All right. The receipts flying away. I give this a two. This you is, want it here? Yeah. Let me. It, it, it matches really your bad. skin color. I just want to know if it's really that bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, look, they're the same color. <laughs> It tastes like if you put chalk into an ice cream. <laughs> it's not. It's, it's a two. Okay. And this is the same ice cream, but it's going to be in a float. It's a yeah. So it's the Boulevard Brewing Company Quirk Strawberry Quirk. Banana Whip. Okay. Hard seltzer. Quirk. Kansas Hard City seltzers are the best. Kansas City, Missouri. We we were just there, and like several Disney. people from here forced us to bring back like ten cases of Quirk because it's so good. Those people are in your house. And then we found out they have Quirk at right Total Wine. That is, Jill told me she saw Quirk at, on Total Wine's inventory yesterday online. I mean, it's certainly better. I mean, the Quirk is great. I mean, cool. Same. Can I get just the Quirk? Just the, just the tip of the Quirk. Is it like Pinnacle Whip? They're not selling just the Quirk. Yes, they're better than that, though. Don't we have enough Quirk here? Uh, oh, the Quirk is, that is good. You should share some of your case with Tom. Any of the quirks that have whip in the name or like have a creamy like note to them? A creamy quirk. Creamy quirk. <laughs> Clementine cream is a flavor? What decade is it? 19, 1910s? So the quirk saves it. I'd say it makes it, brings it up to a four. Clementine quirk. My name is Clementine quirk. And I work here in the mine. Four spike the beast quirks out of seven. Four spike the beast quirks out of seven. Clementine quirk. Do you want to eat this with your Spike the Bee Sport? Oh, what is that? This That's is the one. liquid nitro honey mascarpone cheesecake with fresh honey, granulated honey, and honey mead blueberry compote presented by the National Honey Board. 
you would be forgiven for thinking that's scrambled eggs. But not at Disney World, they're not liquid. It's great. I didn't expect it to be, it's kind of gritty. Mascarpone. It's yeah. cheese. That's fantastic. It's really good. We didn't give a rating to those. I said this is a four. What'd you give the cone? A two? Two. Yeah. Two, a four. The cork pulls it up. The cork can only do so much. This is like a five. This is a seven for me. Is it a this seven? Is, I love it. Mascarpone is so rich. That sweetness. Um, the mix of the berries. It is very good. I love it. This is my favorite dessert at the festival. Really? Yeah. I absolutely adore it. There you have it. And it's a nice big serving too. This is heavy. This is a yeah. heavy plate. That's a seven for me. Would you give it? A five? I could be persuaded to go six. I don't know, but seven to me is like, you can't improve upon it. I don't think I can improve upon that. Okay. It's a seven. So this is kind of our last festival influx, probably, in this park. Because um, I think they'll finally be done over there, probably by July and, and uh, food and wine. Um, yep. But uh, there actually is another, um, they're still working on that other pad of festival booths out by imagination. The booth is there, it's not done yet, Florida Fresh. So what they're doing in the meantime, this could change by tomorrow, who knows. Florida Fresh is temporarily on the right side of the Odyssey. And so we'll start with Florida Fresh, um, which may eventually be out by imagination when they finish. Uh, but for now, uh, and even the book says between World Showcase and Imagination, that didn't happen. Um, grilled warm water lobster tail with key lime butter. This is very calming music. I need this right now. Wow, look at the size. Look at that. Look how thick that it's pretty is. Pretty good. Pretty That's big. a lot of lobster. I think it's fantastic. It's delicious. This is one of the top things I've had today. The butter, I wasn't sure what it was gonna taste like, but it, it complements this lobster really well. I'm gonna give this a seven. So it's it's a rich butter flavor like you're used to having with probably lobster tail anyway. Um, but there is sort of this, there is a hint of that key lime flavor, right? Um, but it's just enough. This might be one of, if not the best savory item I've had at a festival period, at least quality wise like a quality lobster tail at an Epcot festival. I may, am I actually, pinch me, Eric. I don't know that I'm alive right now. This can't be real. Oh, this is phenomenal. Seven. Seven, yeah. Absolutely. What was the price? I need to know the price. 11 25 Not bad. That is an unbelievable lobster tail for 11 25 it's shareable too. I mean, you, you had a really big chunk look, at a reasonable a, first a bite. I took boy. a chunk out of it and there's still plenty left. Yeah, fantastic. Love it. We're not topping that Great today, work. but okay. We'll keep going though. Cubanito, tiny Cuban sandwich uh, with mojo, uh, mo is it mojo or mojo? Mojo. Mojo marinated pork belly, ham, Swiss cheese, pickles, and stone ground mustard sauce. Sorry, usually I'd know that's mojo, but I've been out in the sun the whole day. <laughs> I expected our ratings to go down because it's the end of the day, and then we're like both like, this might be the best thing they, I've ever had in they, the festival. I don't know what happened behind the scenes, but it's been a very positive day. You just wore, it's all over your shirt. Thank God for candy. It wouldn't be a festival without me spilling something or a bird crapping on you. Again, this is really good. It looks like this pork is dry, but I, it's juicy. Very juicy. The bread is perfectly toasted. It's real crispy on the outside, soft on the inside. The pickles match perfectly with everything in here. Cheese, this is... It's a seven. This is one of the best Cuban sandwiches I've had. At least, look, I haven't had one in Miami. I'll let you know. Actually, I think Tampa people and Miami people argue about the origin of the Cuban Do they? sandwich. Yeah, everyone assumes it's Miami because Miami has this large Cuban population, but there are a number of people in Tampa that say it originated with workers there. Either I haven't way, had one in Tampa either. Yeah. Grab a napkin. Yeah. That was super greasy. That was a seven. That's a, it's seven. a seven. Wow. What is happening? Two sevens in a row. It's because we're on the media list. We have to keep it. This is the cucumber watermelon slushy with gin. Couldn't tell you what kind. Lots of gin today. It was gin, because well, gin's like a Lots lighter. Lots of cucumber. It's a lighter liquor, right? It's good for these right. lighter, refreshing cocktails, More, right? Yeah, it'd be a little bit weird with bourbon, I guess. Good. Bourbon we need for food and wine. I think it's good. It's hard for me to get past just that very strong cucumber. I don't really like that strong cucumber taste myself. I know it's very popular in 
in with people these days, but that is strong. It's, it's a little sharp. I like it. I get like a, a drink four. every time you hear Tom say refreshing. I think it's like a four. Well, it's cucumber, four right? Or five. That's the, the reason people drink stuff with cucumber is because some people find it refreshing. Other people have some of the cucumber and then they burp all day and taste cucumber and it's off putting. Yeah. I'm not saying that happened today, but I'm not saying it hasn't. Um, I'll give it like a four. I, I, I agree with you. But four is still, you know, over halfway. It's drinkable. I think people will enjoy it. Uh, so the other half of this booth is what is actually supposed to be in here, uh, which is going to be the citrus blossom, right? Uh, this is going to be the key lime wine slush. Oh, it's great. I love festivals. <laughs> They're the best. This festival is the this festival. Is very good. It's got that nice lime flavor. It's smooth. It's cool. I can't say refreshing. It's not like a frosé. I mean, the texture is like a frosé. Holy tart. It is tart. Wow. But I mean, I mean you know that one is going to be key lime, right? right? I think people will love that. I think it's fantastic. And for the cocktails, I'm going to... Strong. Am I going to go with another seven? I think it's a seven. I think it is. On the cocktail meter. I think it's maybe the best, second best cocktail we've had all day. I, I'm not a big key lime guy, so but I can understand. I'm not either, but I've learned enough doing reviews that what people like about key lime is the tartness. Yeah, and it is that doesn't get much more tart than that. A lot of success today, but you know what, folks? The day is young. We have one more stop, and it is oh, a full no. entree. Hi everyone, it's Ashton Bryce with WDW News Today. We are here at the second day of Flower and Garden here at Epcot. Uh, yesterday, unfortunately, the land cart did not open with the rest of the boots. Today, it is open, and I went and got three food options, three new food options to review for you guys. The first thing we got was the um, acai parfait. Acai parfait is acai, and then uh, Greek yogurt, blackberries, blueberries, and honey granola, all mixed together. It's actually pretty okay. It's nothing that I would rush here to Epcot to go try, um, but if you missed breakfast and you're passing by there or you just got off Soren, I think it's a really nice alternative. Um, again, it's Greek yogurt, so if you don't like Greek yogurt, skip it. It, is, it does still have that very bitter Greek yogurt taste, um, but the acai does level that out. I do think the uh, granola t reminds me a little bit of um, Honey Nut Cheerios. Honey granola kind of makes sense. Um, but that was a nice little sweetness to it. The berries, however, were a little mushy. That's fairly typical for these pre-packaged options, but um, all, all together, it, it's edible, it's good, it's just nothing to write home about. Um, next up, we had the roasted red pepper hummus. Very similar to the acai in that it's nothing you need to rush here to Epcot to try. It is a good alternative. You miss breakfast, get the acai. If you miss your snack, get the hummus. It's a savory option. It's a healthier option than say your typical Mickey bar or uh, a churro. So if this is something you're into, definitely give it a shot. It does have a smoky aftertaste to it. So I'll warn you on that. Um, the cucumbers are a little bit mushy in here, but again, pre-packaged, it's edible. It's just a little off, right? Uh, everything else though is, is decent. I'd give it again, four out of seven, just because I'm not going to rush here. not going to get it again likely, um, but it's good. And then finally, my favorite, something you do need to rush to Epcot for is this uh, Florida smoothie. It tastes like summertime. It tastes like summertime in Florida. Um, it's pineapple, mango, and oranges. All of those flavors come through really brightly. However, I do think um, that the orange is the base flavor. You get pineapple sometimes, you'll get mango in others, a little bit stronger, but the orange is consistent. I love this drink. I will get this time and time again. It's also really pretty, so if you're an Instagram person or a TikToker, this would be really fun for like those pictures that you might be taking um, in your Orange Bird merch. Uh, it's just a really pretty drink. It is a little melted now. I had to take some pictures, but it is delicious. So. Seven out of seven on this guy. Gotta come and try it. Yes, it just did. Um, it's, it's delicious. We did finish our garden graze 
menu. So we have in all five stamps now. And I did go ahead and pick up our prize. You'll pick up your prize at Pineapple Promenade. That's right here um, at the start of the World Showcase. It's hard to miss. And then um, they'll give you your little stamp. It doesn't cost any extra once you get that final stamp. And then you go to the second window and you pick up your prize. And the prize is first a little, little bag of wildflower mix. And now the cast member was very specific with me. He said this is not to be put as a topping on our Dole Whip. Rather take it home and pot, you know, plant it like, a, like you're supposed to. So I thought that was a little interesting. I, I don't, I wouldn't have assumed that this was a topping, but I guess some people are. Um, so anyway, the real excitement is for, of course, the Dole Whip prize. Now, this is a lime Dole Whip. It's also got Minute Maid lemonade in there and then um, mango uh, smoothie. So it's delicious. Of course, it's delicious. It's a Dole Whip. The cup is really cute as well. It is plastic. And there is the Flower and Garden Festival right there. And then it says Garden Graze all the way around it. And you see all these cute little flowers and fruits and such around it. But that's our completed price. Cheers. Nana's back because it's time to end our misery. <laughs> it's excitement. That I don't know what's going on it. over there. We're in Connections Eatery where we're going to have a hot honey chicken sandwich and a blood orange hibiscus margarita with Spike the Bee. Bee! That's in the song. So this is the hot honey chicken sandwich. It looks good. Of course, they have a regular chicken sandwich here with the, which Disney equates to um, a Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich. They think it tastes the same. I'm not a big Chick-fil-A guy. Are you just eating fries already? I can't wait. What are you doing? Reviewing. Uh, what, is, what sauce is that? Zesty. The zesty sauce? I haven't, I haven't had it. That is good. Um, this is an entree, this chicken sandwich. This is not, it is part of the festival, but it is a full-on entree. So this is not you're coming in to snack. You're coming in to eat. This is, look at the size of this behemoth. Yeah, this is definitely display. what I want at the end of this day. What? I won't display. I'm sure you can buy it from a catalog. Sorry, the internet. I'm old. We this only is a have southern. Like three years different here, so I'm just saying. Those three years feel like a lifetime. Whoa. Southern fried chicken sandwich with hot honey and pickles on a brioche bun. Would you like to try pickles? first? I don't like pickles. Anyways, eat pickles. around it. My Look. goodness, look at the size of that. Yeah, no, 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 no. Look at the size of that ham hog. Hey, it's coming. Here you go. We oh. I lost the chicken. You lost the chicken? Mm. We lost a chicken. Yeah. You could still bite that end and be fine. <laughs> Bless you, Eric. Bless, Bless you. you. Ah, what do I know? I... That side is ugly. Pick up the other side. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm breaking it. Pick up. I got it. Give it to me. Oh no, it's falling out. You see? <laughs> it's late, we are tired, okay? There we go, look at that. Be nice to each other. Sharing no, is caring. never. <laughs> <laughs> it's very good. Oh, mm. I don't like pickles, but I like this pickles. It's little pickles, like you can Maybe get you just everywhere. had bad pickles. I'm just telling you, maybe you've had bad pickles. Um, they do pair perfectly with this. For being a hot honey chicken sandwich, it's not super spicy. I'm not getting really a kick, but the honey flavor is really pleasant. It's a nice thick piece of chicken. It's beautifully fried, the exterior. The right amount of crunch, it's not hard to bite into. The bread is soft and, and right for the sandwich, buttery. Um, all the toppings work. It's, it's a nice entree. I would have this. Really? I give us a six. I don't know why, but I kind of wanted to have a waffle on the top and bottom instead of bun. We could make it. You want me to buy you two liege waffles? <laughs> we can make it right now. With like 30 bucks? Let's food blog it. We'll do a food hack right now. Wow. It wouldn't be like a, it wouldn't be that much with liege waffles, like three five something, bucks, four? Yeah. About five well, bucks. the orange bird one's 4 19 so the other one's got to be cheaper, no? So you could, for a couple dollars more, try to do it. I don't know that a liege waffle is the right waffle for that. Do you like it? Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. I like the chicken. That's good because that's the main component. Yeah. The chicken 
The chicken is like Popeye chicken, but it's good. It's not like Popeye's. You ever had a Popeye before? I've had, I, look I'm at me, I've had a lot of Popeye's. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love Popeye's, so. Popeye's is great. Better than KFC. From the Bronx, we have Popeye's. <laughs> hey. Alright, my braces are probably full of sandwich, but I don't care. It's time to finish this. With you know what we're having a blood orange hibiscus margarita. Eric, give me the spike to be spork. Which is perfect for blood orange margaritas, of course. Uh, this is Terramana tequila. That's the rocks tequila. He's not a popular man right now though. Uh, with hibiscus oh. and blood orange syrup and orange juice. The Would family like rock guy, right? What family rock? Right? The rock is from the family ride. The universal... Fast uh, and Furious? Oh. I think you were saying family, family guy. I was like, what? No, not family yeah. food. That's a Steve Harvey. No. <laughs> Please, Nana, make it end. Put the spork into the margarita and end this. You don't need the ice. Just try it. You have to drink it from the sport. Oh, okay. That's WWNT tradition. Cheers. Oh, mm. <laughs> mm. This is good. I am not really drinking girl, but this is good. I am not really drinking girl. Yeah. I have, well, hey, I used to drink a lot back in like well, almost 10 years ago. Didn't we all? Who likes margaritas? Can someone who likes margaritas try this? I think it's good. Is there any margarita But I'd like a girls? second opinion. You don't have to be on camera. I just want to know thoughts. So the margarita is actually very good. It's a little syrupy, but everyone here agreed better than the Mexico one. So I'm going to tell you, if you want a festival margarita, that is not only full size, that blows the Mexico margaritas away. I'm going to give that a five. Five there? Five I mean, out of seven? The, the sandwich? I thought I gave a six. People say six on the margarita. All right, I'll, uh, I'm not a big margarita guy, so I'll, let's do six on the margarita too. So overall, some solid entries from Connection. So folks, that's going to wrap up our review. If for some reason you forgot, because this was three hours long, um, all the things we reviewed, there will be another video here on the channel in which we do the top seven things you should try and the top seven new things you shouldn't. You can watch that. Of course, if you want to support videos like this, you can join the WDWNT Interglobe Society at patreon.com slash WDWNT. And as well, shop with Carousel of Products at carouselproducts.com. And don't forget, I'll plug this here anyway, Stage 89, our celebration of 35 years of Disney's Hollywood Studios. Join us in person or stream from home, the largest ever in-person gathering of the Imagineers who built the Disney MGM Studios. Go to stage89.com. For more info, all proceeds go to Give Kids the World Village here in Orlando. So that's it for us from Flower and Garden. I will now go into hibernation, and I'll see you all sometime in the future. <laughs>